Every time I turn on the news, the world seems a more complicated place. There's another disaster. There's another natural event, and we don't know how to explain it. There's so many different potential explanations, and the world only seems to be getting more and more complicated. However, I believe that technology, data, and systematic thinking can help us see through this fog of complexity. So today, I'm here to walk you through a very personal, 25-year academic, professional, and journey with my teams to answer a very human question with science, with analytics, to answer a very human question about our history and get to an answer: Why? Is the world random? Is it deterministic? Is it fortune? Or is it fate that governs our lives? In order to answer this question, let's begin to explore some very human questions that we all have, that we all have in our minds: Who does what to whom, how, where, when? To answer why. Let's go on a scientific big data journey this morning. Let's look at, across our world and help begin to understand some of these answers. If the world was totally random, events would be randomly distributed across the globe. But it's not. There's pattern. There's information. There's structure. And from news sources, blogs, social media, the Internet of Things, we can create a picture of human events across the world. And with the same data, we can hear the frequency of those events. We can hear news events, stories, life stories, war, peace, life, death, happiness, sadness. We can also hear the symphony of human history as the tone in our melody. So let's go on a journey together. Let's go begin to understand. Who? That's what to whom? How? Where? When? Hopefully, why? Let's go to a happy place. Let's rewind the big data global clock back to Los Angeles, November 2016, just in time for the holidays. Here, the Italian community wanted to sponsor a cuisine and cinema festival in Los Angeles, land of foodie and film critic alike. It starts with Italian Week, recipes being exchanged, and the wonderful joy and experience that creates throughout the entire community. We see many happy or cooperative events, peoples, groups, individuals, entities, sharing food, sharing stories, talking ideas. And in these events, each one of us is creating our very own natural story. So, let's use science. Let's use data. Let's use a little something called network analysis to figure out the events, the food, the film, and let's see what we can see. Here's our first actor on stage, and now we have our second performing actor, the local LA community, which will be interacting with the Italian community in this event, giving us not only the what, but now the who. Or the who's, and the how of the story is: What are we going to do? We're going to offer to create Italian cuisine in Los Angeles week, never been done before. And as human beings are social animals, they like to act, react, and interact with each other. We can see the community's wonderful receptivity to this idea. But the story is also told against the backdrop of many other actors in Los Angeles. It's more complex. It's a larger community, and now we see the Italian community reaching out to the rest of the LA community, the media inviting others to attend and enjoy and and celebrate this wonderful, wonderful event. And in this story, and in these actions, we see the perspective of one of our actors. We see their history and their very real experience. But what about our other actor? What's their perspective? How do they see, act, react, 
and experience this very real event. Here it's a more complicated story. Here we can see Angelinos reaching out to many, many, many other members of the community, inviting the governors, schools, and others to participate in this wonderful time. But we also see one conflictual, one red line that probably someone in LA city government was not a, not very happy about this event. Perhaps it was because of extra permitting work. We'll never know. Or can the data tell us? So. The perspective of the local community is very, very different than the Italian community. A bit more complicated. It may or may not be richer, but there are definitely more pieces to it. It isn't just you. It isn't just me. It's not our actors on stage. It's all of us acting, reacting, and interacting together that creates the stories of our events. And each story is a thread. And each thread begins to weave that very rich social fabric of news, events, and our historical tapestry. But none of us are the center of the universe, for we all are. And that is what creates our individual perceptions, unique experiences, and collective history. And while these patterns get complex, and while they change over time, there is information, there is structure, there are patterns to that very human narrative, answering our curiosity of who does what to whom, how, where, when, and hopefully why. Now that we can see part of the answer to this question, why can't we hear it? So, using sonification of big data, we created a sound a musical tone for each type of event. Inspired by Pluchik's Wheel of Emotion from Social Psychology, we wanted to map the emotions, or we call in big data, sentiment, from each news story and event for a richer understanding of what, what is actually going on. So if, now that we can see the fabric of society, we saw that form and evolve in those network structures, let's listen to what the data says to us, what the events say to us, and the sounds of emotion. So here, we're going to listen to three emotions, pensiveness, sadness, and grief. Distraction, surprise, amazement. Annoyance, anger, and rage. And finally, serenity, joy, and ecstasy. We had a lot of fun doing that, by the way. <laughs> so now that we can hear the big data symphony of our events and emotions, it's driven by very real social human history, actions, and experiences. Of course, there are many emotions in all our events, for simplicity, let's just listen to the top two lead instruments in our Big Data Symphony Orchestra. Let's see how the real sites of those events, with our Big Data sounds and our network structures, and let's see and hear and feel the very rich, data-driven, human-driven fusion of that event in a very Los Angeles story. Now we can see and hear the pace, tempo, and tone of global events, of histories, of voices that may or may not have ever been heard. Personally, I've been blessed to have the opportunity to travel to many places in this world. One thing that I've learned 
no matter where I go and who I talk to, is that people are the same wherever you go, with the same hopes, dreams, thoughts, and aspirations. Now, let's use our big data time machine. Let's go to a very, very different place, with different events, with different sights, and with different sounds and experience. Let's go to Al Raqqa, Syria. With a very different pattern of events, actions, history, there's still a pattern. This pattern persists. Unfortunately, most of it are the conflictual stories, the very real stories of human beings exactly like you and I sitting here today. And these are conflictual stories of struggle, fighting, and survival. And now that we've seen some of these patterns of the what, which is transpiring, let's experience today how the Syrian social fabric is being woven starting with the Battle of El Raqqa. Here we have ISIS, here we have the civilian population, those are the Who's. We can see how ISIS is assaulting the civilians, and we can see how the civilian population is desperately protesting, criticizing their actions, and trying to find a way out. Like Los Angeles, El Raqqa is complex but for a very different set of reasons. There are many foreign groups, there are many local groups, there are many global groups, all supporting not two sides, but many different sides with different interests, outcomes, and desires. And now we can begin to see the news stories that we've all heard of how a very different Syrian social fabric is woven through the actions, not of cooperation, but through the violence of conflict. This is not a happy story. It's not a sad story. The story of fear and conflict that we can see sewn in red threads by each one of our very human individuals on another part of this planet. Syria is messy. Syria is complex. But there are patterns, there is structure, there is information, and it emerges, and it's our challenge to see through that fog. And in the story of conflict, in the story of history, in the story of events, now let's listen and share our other human beings' very real emotional song with data. As we just saw, the world is not random. It's not deterministic. It might be complex, but it is not incomprehensible. Human beings are wonderful, strategic, dynamic, adaptive folks that like to mess stuff up in the most terrible or most beautiful of ways. Although we might not understand it perfectly, or maybe we never understand it perfectly all the time, there are patterns, there's information, there's structures in our collective history and this pulse of our planet. While we only saw two places on this planet, two specks in time, this is why the world is complex. The speed and velocity of who does what to whom, how, where, when, and hopefully understanding why is faster than any one single human being can process. And through the randomness, beyond the determinism, the fate, 
the fortune, I have personally learned the most important lesson in my life. We create the world we live in each and every day. If we do not like something, change it. If you want to help someone, do it. If you want to accomplish something, be it. And in the seemingly cold, big data scientific journey, this time machine, I have been given the greatest gift of human desire. Hope. <laughs>